Nothing beats a Shima Pong girl. Yes, my girl, my girl Musica is a Shima Pong girl, and nothing beats that. But no, episode eight of Gushing Over Magical Girls, fantastic episode. Thankfully, Asahi Productions is keeping it together. I was talking about that in my last video. I'm like, okay, things are going to start ramping up based on what I've skimmed with the manga, and I want them to keep things together, keep it looking good, and they kept it looking good. And wherever it counts, they made it look real good. I'm actually surprised they did a whole musical sequence for Music Cut in that whole segment. So hats off to them for pulling that off. Even though, yes, technically it was a pretty bad song. <laughs> I like Kiwi pretty much thinks like we all think. That wasn't that good. Except for her diehard fans. They're all going to go, no, she's perfect. That was a perfect song. But no, really interesting episode because in this episode we have brought up a very interesting concept here. Besides the idea that, yes, you have the... Enormi, enormi people, they're pretty much breaking off and creating their own group and essentially becoming the enemy of Vena and their organization. But additionally, the, yes, there's a star system in this, this entire thing. Something I never really kind of put together. I just assumed that it was just a stylized thing that they chose to do. But that, when all of a sudden they call Kiwi a starless, I'm like, you know, you're right. I don't think I've ever seen a star on her. And at the same time, that immediately makes me go, wait, so how many stars is Utena? Like, depending on how, like, worked up she is, girl gets a lot of stars. I counted in the last episode when she took over Azul and made Azul pretty much broken. She had six under each eye, and then she's always had one in each eye. And I don't think anybody else has ever had that kind of stylized choice of having them in the eye. And additionally, whenever she gets really worked up, her eye, the ones in her eyes get really, like, pronounced. So the assumption there is that her, she's always been seen as being possibly a two star, but possibly a four star because one, two, three, four. And additionally, as she gets more kind of worked up, she can go up as high as, again, 14 stars. That's insane. <laughs> like it, the entire group that they went up against this episode was they were all three stars, I believe, except for the Lord. The Lord had four star. Alice has always had three visible. There could be two more underneath her bangs. And yes, technically Leopard has always been zero. Now, there's two aspects here. One is that we can see. And it could be that Leopard has it and it's, I don't know, somewhere that clothing hasn't been ripped off. <laughs> there's a couple places that Leopard can technically hide them. And so it could always be one of those aspects of like, but you never seen this one behind the ear and then suddenly they are like a 15 star or it could be more of an idea of what Baser has already showed us the more they go into some certain route the more stars they get i'm saying certain route because with with Baser, it's always yes she's dominating something or getting some sort of joy and pleasure out of something and that increases the amount of stars that she has they start to form on her face so it's obvious that they power up based on some sort of thing they're into, or at least that's what's indicated with Baser. And it could be that each one of them has something they're into that will make them have more stars. Say Leopard. She likes to be wanted. So that's her thing to Baser. Baser likes to see the different faces and, and put people through things. That's her thing that increases her stars. So Leopard, being that we've indicated that she wants to be wanted, wants to be seen as the best, the cutest, what if it, whenever Baser gives her that she will increase her stars. I'm not sure what Alice would be, just being having attention or something like that. I'm not sure they really indicate exactly what she wants, maybe just giving her dolls. <laughs> but at least it, it's always one of these systems where here is the baseline, there's a star system, and this is their stars, and then there's a, the, somebody that always comes up and says, oh, you only have zero stars. And then sure enough, like typical with these types of setups, something will break it. And I like at least that we've already got an indication of that. Like coming into this match, yes, Lord thinks that this is how it is, but we already know, no, that can't be how it is because Baser increases their stars all the time. So there's got to be something else here. So at least with this one, it's not trying to be like, oh, well, tricked you because we already know it. And I like that aspect of it. But yeah, we interested to see how that kind of plays out. And it looks like in this episode, we also had Azul being trained by Sulfur to get stronger. I'll be curious to see if... I, I mentioned it way back there when they first showed that Sulfur had the ability to, in, you know, create these big fists, that she wasn't just a shielder, that I was kind of curious that if each one of these girls had some sort of, you know, elevated level they can go to. So you basically have... Baser has shown that she can essentially, you know, ascend, essentially. Like, go a different stage. This is my stage two. This is my, my second form. 
uh, sulfur again has a second form. Maybe she can get Azul to have a second form, and that's gonna that's gonna help her get that confidence to get back into the fight. And then yeah, I'm sure we'll see that with every single one of the characters. So cool stuff that kind of opened the door to kind of the throw away something new in with the mechanics to keep it kind of rolling. And again, if my theory is correct, that is based on some sort of desire. Like maybe Sulfur already figured it out on the Magic Girl side that we have a desire to fight and that makes her have those fists. Bazer's figured it out on this side. If I have this desire that I want, I start to get stronger. So on both sides, and again, we've already indicated this idea, that the power comes from the same place. It comes from these certain creatures, which is Vena and Vats. So if they're the same source of power, it's the assumption there that they will also have the same system of increasing. It's just over here, it's indicated by the stars. Over here, it just seems like their form changes. And it could be the same with the, the stars as well, their form changing. So cool stuff there. But that aside, <laughs> yes, we have them go to visit the, the, the others of the organization who were out hunting magical girls. And I like that they kind of indicated that Vena told, you know, Bazer, hey, change your form beforehand before you go there. And even later on, you know, Utena's like, you told us to change our form. You knew this would happen. You were trying to use the transformation to essentially protect our identities because you knew this was going to happen. And I, I think that goes in that whole realm of kind of curious as to what Vena's whole purpose is here. Because it can indicate this idea that he doesn't want them to take over the magical girls. Like these girls, they're they're all hunting the magical girls. But it doesn't seem like that's what Vena wants. But it's more of an idea that Vena believes that it, it seems like Vena has the idea that, yeah, you guys are getting ahead of yourself. We need to pull back and power up before we go out and hunting. But no, they're like, Lord and all them are like, no, we're going to go out there and take them all out. We don't want to sit here and waste our time. We're powerful enough. We've defeated all these magical girls. You're the ones that are weak. We just want to get this done. So again, we'll get it done and we'll just do our own thing. This, this is what she wanted. We'll do it ourselves. So it does pretty much turn the enemy faction into multiple factions. Now, how I see this kind of playing out with Utena and the overall story is that I, I think it is going to turn into essentially a three-faction thing because Utena wants to do fun things with the Magical Girls. She doesn't want to beat them. Then you have Lord Squad over here. They want to take down all the Magical Girls and actually dominate the world. And then you have the Magical Girls who are just trying to protect good or whatever. Or just I don't know. They haven't really indicated exactly what what Vots' whole thing is. The assumption is that, yes, it in to public view, it is to protect the world from the bad organization, the ones that went to world domination. But is that really their goal? That's the question mark. It might just be to beat Vena and their their people, not necessarily protect the world. Protect the world is just what the public sees so that they gain favor of the public. That's really all it is. But yeah, the assumption there is that Utena is going to be completely wanting to take down, <laughs> more so take down Lord Squad more than Tres Magia because Lord Squad wants to defeat essentially crush the magical girls. And so, yeah, Utena, this episode's like, you never told me about this this magical girl hunting. What the hell are you doing? I'm mad at you, and I'm mad at her. <laughs> I'm going to destroy them all. Uh, yeah, seeing Utena and Bazer in this, like, enraged state of, like, I'm going to crush every single one of them because they're hunting down magical girls. Like, seeing those things on the ground over there just set her off. But yeah, I did love the whole scene with them being offered to join them. <laughs> and Utena's like... No, I, that's okay. I don't want that. <laughs> They're like, what are you talking about? The, the the Lord is actually asking you if you want to join. That's a good thing. You could world domination and everything. I, I, no, nah, I don't. I don't want that. That's okay. And then Kiwi's like, if Utena doesn't want it, I'm with her. And then Alice is like, yeah, I'm gonna stick with them. Uh, it was kind of a funny little shot, but yeah. Then we send in Sister Gagant, Gigant. I think it was Gagant. Yeah, Sister the, the Giant Sister. Who <laughs> doesn't want to fight, but because Lord says so, I'll do it. I knew the moment they put him in Alice's little thing, I'm like, well, her name is Gagant, so I I, I think she's probably going to grow big, and yeah, she grew, a, she grew big and destroyed it. Nice little, like, two shows this season that has the whole, like, massive girl with <laughs> people stuck inside the chest, just like with Chain Soldier. Uh, we're kind of just... There's a lot of similarities in this season with, like, mostly, like, BDSM. Like, there's so much of this in anime right now. This season is just full of it. But, yeah, they beat them, run away. Kiwi's just heartbroken. <laughs> my poor, my poor baser has been hurt. It's all because of me because I'd explode us and get out of there. And, yes, it shows how much Utena really does care for Kiwi and the idea that she was shielding her from the explosion. So, she likes her girl. She likes her girl. No, it's, she's so cute. I can't let her get damaged. <laughs> 
<laughs> She's so cute. I can't let her get damaged. But no, once again, Fuka Izumi, the seiyu for Utena. My gosh, that scene of her just going nuts was just chef kiss. Like this, <laughs> this seiyu better get a raise. Like this girl needs a raise. Like of everything that I've seen, she has absolutely nailed that descent into madness and that crazy cackle that she's got going for her. Like, I I've said it before, keep saying it and keep saying it. Literally, Fuka Izumi makes Utena, makes this series as good as it is. <laughs> Just her cackling, going crazy, that 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 joy that's in there. She has that, that insanity, but then that, that, that joy that kind of seeps through as she's yelling about how much she hates them and that she's going to take them all down. Like, those four stars, I'm going to make them fall. And then, yes, Kiwi coming up and saying, you crazy, girl. <laughs> that's what she loves about you. You crazy. But man, that was such a great scene. And yeah, once again, showing those those stars just so, slowly start to form on her face. Now, right there, it only showed like, I think, five on each side. But still, it's like, compared to what before with Azul, she was getting extremely excited about Azul. And that's what made what I think the six on each side. I think it's based on how much she's into something. And yes, that kind of implies that she's more into <laughs> beating down Azul than actually defeating them. But I think it's going to turn into one of those things where she just wants to crush them. Like, she has that desire to make people just be crushed and be destroyed and see the faces on them. And, yeah, it's probably going to turn into her pretty much dominating the entire group. But, again, my gosh, <laughs> such a great freaking scene, dude. Oh, she's so fantastic. Fuka Izumi, please get that girl any role with crazy characters. It's probably going to turn into a thing like Aoyuki, where Aoyuki is incredible with crazy characters and for a while there she was just doing mostly just those roles at least the ones that stood out to me and so there was a fear that that would be like her only thing and she has technically branched out but this could be definitely be a role in which Fuka Izumi can kind of get into with crazy characters and then go outside of that realm but she needs more roles <laughs> she definitely needs more roles but yeah we have the face off of Muzika, Alice, and Leopard which that was excellent like I said they they went above and beyond. Aussie Productions could have not done that much work. And now, granted, it wasn't like a full-on dance routine and everything. It was mostly just stills on the screen. But to kind of go through that much effort of actually playing out the entire song was really well done. I mean, hats off to them for going that extra mile for it. But yeah, I kind of assumed this was going to be the case that Leopard and Musica were going to be like at odds with each other, like rivals, because it is another one of those aspects of Musica wants to be the top idol and everybody adore her. And of course, again, Leopard wanted that as well. Wants everybody to see her as the cutest. But I think the thing that stood out to me the most in this whole little segment is that Alice goes in and protects Leopard. And it's funny because everything before now has always kind of indicated this idea that Leopard and Alice just kind of butt heads. Kiwi and Cody Sue, they kind of just butt heads all the time because... Yeah, Kiwi's a little bit more immature. She keeps teasing Korisu, and Korisu is just always kind of trying to struggle to get her dolls back from her or whatever. Even in this episode, kind of just hanging it on the guardrail and just running away. It, it's something that they've kind of established that they kind of butt heads because they kind of they're both kind of childish in a way. Um, Korisu being more innocent and just not wanting to be bothered, and Kiwi just kind of nagging at her all the time. But it's still having this whole moment where yes, Alice protects her, and then afterwards having this little brief moment of like, I'm sorry, I went out there on my own. I'll get you a new doll. I'm sorry that I broke your doll. Let me get you a new one. I'll, I don't know how to fix them. <laughs> it was cute to kind of see the two of them finally come together because it's always kind of indicated this idea that just Utena is taking care of uh, Korisu and, and Kiwi is just always nagging her. And yeah, so wrap up the episode with uh, Muzika getting her punishment. <laughs> getting her, look old Muzika getting her punishment from Lord uh, Enormi. Like I said, some Shima Pan. Some Shima Pan. There's a side of me that almost believes that their leader is sort of the same as Utena in a way and the idea that she likes I mean she got the whip out and she's slapping her and punishing her there could be an aspect that she's sort of similar in the idea that yes she likes to put people through pain because that's what Utena does as well and maybe that's why she's so powerful maybe that maybe that <laughs> going into BTSM enjoying and being the master of that whole scenario is what makes them that powerful because again Lord Narmi is a four star and nobody else is besides, again, Utna whenever she is Bazer and getting into whatever she's doing. So that might actually be the whole key to this whole thing is everybody going to start powering up the moment they find out what their little th thing that they like is. <laughs> Anyways, that's my thoughts on episode eight of Gushing Over Magical Girls. Really fantastic episode. Looking forward to how this kind of all plays out. But yeah, 
Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, if you did, make sure that like button down below. Comment. Let me know the thought of the episode. Additionally, if you're new to the channel, make sure that subscribe button to my content. I need to use first impressions. Stop blitz up with anime. It's pretty much here. Additionally, if you want to support the channel more, I have a page on link, tips, links, and thanks, membership button down below. Greatly appreciate it, but it does. And y'all take care.